but... Right, welcome back. We're here again. Episode 20 of the End Product Podcast. Uh, Tony's out, so we've uh, got another super sub in attendance. This week we have Harry Trades himself in the building. Don't forget, before we get into it, like, subscribe, follow, uh, comment, uh, and let people know that we are about End Product. Harry, welcome to the pod. Uh, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing very well, mate. Yeah, thank you both of you for um, the invitation. Um, debut on the End Product podcast. So yeah, no, really excited to be honest. Debut day. And how about you, Quinny? How's your week been, mate? Um, the week itself has it's actually been, I don't know, quite emotional. I was all set up for a big midweek. I thought, yeah, we're going to have a great Champions League and da, 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 all the other stuff. And yeah, it didn't really pan out like that, unfortunately. So like... Um, no weekend end product for me with all the teams blown up in my face basically and then at the midweek no end product I've got the I've got the big EF which is you know I guess, I guess a consolation prize at this point but uh, so yeah the week itself um, in terms of SO5 has been horrible but, but the prize pools me and Harry were streaming about it last night the prize pool stuff and this weekend it's definitely been a an upward trajectory towards the, the back end of the week you know walking on sunshine uh and ready to rock. Stashy Always got to be a, a nice, a nice feeling seeing that uh, that Celtic, Celtic players come back into uh, fruition for you. And I'm sure that that we'll be talking about a bit more end product on uh, next week's pod with a bit of luck. I managed and to. Scrape. We wish obviously uh, we wish Tony massive luck for this game week. He is away to Rangers. He's yep. also captain of my underdog under forty five squad. And uh, along with the other Dundee United lads, we're hoping they get a good result at <laughs> the weekend. <laughs> Good luck to Dundee United. Yeah, I could do with a, I could do with a nice Dylan Levitt score in that game as well. So, fingers crossed, he bring, uh, brings up the goods for me. I managed to scrape a few rewards last weekend. I know we were talking about Oof. not being too sure, but nothing good didn't get the 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 pools were not uh, were not too nice to me. Uh, let's say so. Um, I got three rewards in the end. All sort of U twenty three, one limited and two rares. Um, both to be tier twos. One of them's worth 0.2 ETH though, so I'm trying to shift that one. Um, but nothing really that was of much use to me, given uh, what I have like in my arsenal. What about you, Harry? Did you uh, did you manage to get any end product last weekend? Mate, I did. To be fair, yeah, I um I managed to finish 13th in under 23 rare pro, which was a bit of a shock because my first player to come out of the team was or or like news related was Tangai Nianzu or Tangai Kwasi as some people might know him, the, the ex Bayern defender, um, was on the bench for Sevilla. So he was my first super rare of, of two to play. And uh, yeah, he was obviously starting on the bench. I thought the lineup was absolutely dead and buried. And then you got <laughs> Jurian Timber, who I won a couple month, uh, a couple weeks ago, sorry, smashes in 100. Jesus Ferreira smashes in a 91. <laughs> Florentino Luis smashes in 105 for me with a like, super rare bonus. And then Costa gets a clean sheet. You're looking at 441 points with a Tangai 32 score, which was like out of like I've never really had a situation where like one one player's like massively let me down. Mm. Um, because with running f- three main teams, like I can't afford to have DMPs. Like it's just not something I can do. And uh the fact okay, he's not a DMP, obviously he came off the bench, but him being on the bench completely kills the momentum. And sure. um yeah, but over the moon I ended up winning a Jonathan David, which was Quite welcomed. Like it's not somebody that I would look to buy, um, considering his, his start to the season. He's had a few decent games, but like no real um consistency, I would say, in his scores. But I have actually um thrown him into one of my priority lineups this weekend. So yeah, big um responsibility on his shoulders at home to Toulouse. And yeah, I'm excited to see how he uh he gets on, to be fair. Do you know, Wait, I was thinking man. about Jonathan David after we were talking about him last night, Harry, is yeah, yeah. very similar SO5 wise in terms of like the emotions you go through and the trauma he gives you is Yari <laughs> for Sharon, you know, like they're almost identical in that sense where they'll get like three games and you're like, oh, that's it. He's broken they're through. Back. He's a top yeah. guy. And then 35s, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. you don't play him, 80. <laughs> 100%. You know, that's classic. 100%. Yeah, he's... He's going to be um, an interesting one. I don't know how patient I'm going to be with him, but like, yeah, there's no sort of best start of fixture for me to to really sort of implement him in. And, and forwards were my, probably my my weakest position in terms of my gallery for a long time until I sort of, sort of just addressed it. And um, yeah, tried to bring in a few guys. I brought in um, a Jasper Carlson, who's still injured, but, you know, bought him at the time, you know, 
couple of weeks ago now to where like hopefully get back into the side whatever at AZ but yeah before that I was starting the season with like two rare forwards and one of them was Fatty who was injured so I was like mm. I'm in a bad position here I needed to really bulk up and and thankfully I've won a few um and, and sort of brought a few in so hopefully they can yeah do their bit for me for sure nice I was a uh, I was in a similar position actually in like the way that I scraped into the rewards last weekend because I think it was my under 23 team or, or my, I think, yeah, it was my under-23 team. And all of the outfield players banged really well. Um, but then Safanov scored like 11 points or something. And I just kind of wrote it off. But by the end of the week, it did sort of scrape into the rewards. Um, obviously, there were some massive scores last weekend. We saw the first ever like perfect score in the limited division. I think it was, yes. the, was it the challenger division, that one? If I remember rightly. Yeah. yeah. Someone uh, managed. There was a lot oh, of... I feel Russian set. Yeah, that's right. Um so the overall winner in the end, who did hit the big 500 plus, like all the bonuses, um, put the Kim Key goalkeeper in. where And that was mm-hmm. from setting aside from a lot of people who've maybe used Diogo Costa or some of your, like, your, your classic uh, figures that you like to see at the top of those prize pools all the time. But when Zenit and Ajax both hit huge scores, it's like, you know, challenger. Um, and obviously without Celtic as well, I think those were the two clubs that if they bang, you're not using those cards you're 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 going to be lucky to get anywhere near the rewards but um yeah um fair play to i can't remember the manager's name but great a great achievement the first ever perfect score on so rare i believe um i know that probably i don't know if i'm wrong in saying this but i think it might have been his only team it may well have been yeah or was that or was that the guy that won the specialist thing and got messy somebody just won one of these things quite remarkably and i think i think it may have been that guy it was his only team that he put out that's nice. He, um, I think it was a, f- a 565, because I, I made a video on it on Tuesday. I do like a game week review every week. And yep. um, yeah, it was 565 points. <laughs> Nuts. Which is just bonkers. I'm looking at the team now, yeah. Hmm. When you consider that's a team that doesn't have super rare, like 25% bonuses as well. What division that's was it? Challenger it. Rare? Limited. Challenger Europe Limited. It, it was his only oh, team. I'm, I'm looking at it right now. It, it was, was his, his only team. team. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, that was wild. It does happen. Dreams come true. I was looking at my you know stuff this weekend and uh, I'm f- I'm not feeling massively confident about uh, my teams this week. And I think partly due to the fact that I've been on a stag do all week and haven't had those little hours to dip in and do a bit of team news and a bit of like tinkering and a bit of sort of like pre-setting my teams before the weekend news comes in. And then I do a bit of tinkering. So I went, I went in like at nine o'clock this morning and did literally my first kind of look at my teams. Mm-hmm. And quite a lot of my fixtures are, you know, when you go on so rare data and you kind of order by like the percentage of like their win percentage, like chance and stuff and like the opposition scores and all that kind of thing. And nothing was jumping out at me like, well, that's a must play. That's a, you know, that's a useful one. So I'm not feeling massively confident about my teams this weekend, but. I think that's good because if I'm going in with like low expectations, I'll be quite happy to win anything this weekend. But what what are what are you guys ex- excited for? Like, what's your big lineups looking like for the weekend ahead? Yeah, I've got like an under twenty three rare team with the Barca boys in. Obviously, you know, tough result midweek, but I've I've sort of um, stuck my neck out and, and and gone with Fatty, and I have um, or had other forward options that I could have played it safe with. Like I had a Jesus Ferreira, you know, I know he was, a, well, if, if nobody, he's away from home to San Jose, which is, is a good fixture. Like I don't think it's not, but I just thought, you know what, like I'm just going to, like I need to take more risks some, like sometimes. And I think this is the, that sometime just before international break, Fatty didn't start on, on midweek, they lost. And I don't know, I just feel like they could just, well, they should steamroll an L chase side at home. Um, mm-hmm. I've gone with Pedri as well. I know he had a, I don't know if you watched this dish midweek, um, but obviously had, had a few big chances and I saw Quinny was quite vocal on Twitter um, <laughs> about them. But no, it's, yeah, I mean, yeah, like fair dues. Like there was some massive chances in that game. Yeah, Barca dominated for a long period. And I think Kimmich even come out and said like they, they were outplayed for a long period in that game. But unfortunately, goals win games, don't they? And mm. you get punished if you if you don't take your chances. And, and Pedri had a few, um, but I don't really see him personally being rotated. And then with that, I've got an Enzo Fernandez. And a Durian Timber, which like my four outfielders are looking really, really nice on paper. I know AZ away is a tough fixture, but 
but my goalkeepers right now is what's killing me apart from Costa and Alban Lafont. I don't know if you've got one, Stish, but oh my God. Just I've not got him. Dying, mate, ever, ever since I bought him. Oh yeah, God. he's one of those frustrating players, isn't he? Because he's good, but he's playing at an, like a side which is kind of like mid, mid to bottom half of the table. And he's always... Yeah. It's very rare to see him hit like a purple patch of form because the thing with most goalkeepers as well is like, it's difficult to like keep a clean sheet when you're playing in a side like that anyway. So you have to have an outstanding game, make a lot of saves and keep a clean sheet. So he's one of those players that's either like a 35 or, you know, with the new matrix possibly below or like an 80 plus. So there's no kind of like in between where he'll have a good, good game all around and maybe only concede one or two. It's like he'll either mm-hmm. keep a clean sheet or he'll concede three and you and like completely dead dead the lineup. But yeah, I've not got one, but he's one of them because when when I came on the platform, he was one of the top sort of like prospects. He's he's always been expensive as well, and I think that yeah. like the scores that he puts out are like a little bit hard to justify paying the price because it's like you kind of you what you really want one of those U twenty threes who maybe is a bit more likely to keep a clean sheet. Um, and yeah, I've got, I kind of like, I've tried to like, try to sort of like lighten the load a little bit on um, my sort of champ, champ U23 crossover. I, I tend to be a bit more like challenger U23 crossover. So he's not as like appealing to me because I don't yes. really play champ as much. Um, I've got like one goalkeeper mm-hmm. champ now. So it's one of the last lineups I put together. But it's quite a good lineup this week because I didn't want to risk Musiala in any of my U23 just because he, he started in the week and I thought, you know, they might rotate, give Nabry a, a, a game um, instead of him. But the thing with Musiala is he can come off the bench and make an assist or a goal. So um, he's still useful, even if he does. So I've, I've, I just whacked him as a, in as a captain on my champ, just because if he starts, he'd be a great captain. If he doesn't, he's got a chance of coming in off the bench and getting an assist. Um, but yeah, I think that was like, you talk about like risk and that. I think Musiala in one of my main sides would have been a risk, but it was a because of the way that my fixtures look, I was a bit more like let's try and focus a bit more on like the all round score and try and get try and mm-hmm. get a solid score across the board. Um, and yeah, like hopefully I can scrape my way into the rewards. I'm, like I said, I'm not feeling massively confident, but Quinny, you must be feeling pretty good. Got the Celtic boys back in the mix. Well, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, that is how I'm feeling, but also like because this whole it's the last game before internationals as well there's a few I don't know I, f- I found it quite difficult to actually put all my combos together like that's one of the things I kind of wrestled with so I was waiting for Champions League to happen for not just Celtic but a couple other teams and see who's in who's out what was the result like who's blah de blah and uh, yeah so like over the last, so from like kind of Wednesday night through streaming Mahari last night uh, to that kind of point it was just about trying to figure out yeah, the combos and whatever, but this, like, as most people who's listened to me rabble on about this stuff long enough will know, like, the star super rare in D2 is one of the things I'm really, I've really built my gallery to try and chase down, like, mm. and this week when I looked at the prize pool, in the actual star payout is guys like Kimmich, and uh, they're finally kind of back in there as a star super rare, whereas just in the last, like, month or two, there has been a star super rare on the podium, but it's been, like, the best guy has been, like, um, I can't even think of an example, but, you know, like somebody decent, like it's Morioka or Cicinha or something, you know, but not like Kimmich, yeah. Bappy, you know, somebody at that top end calendar that make, uh, caliber that makes it um, worthwhile pursuing, in my opinion, if that makes sense. You say so, that was um, in the I'm just trying to open the pool now, sorry. On you go. Was, did you say that was in the All-Star pool or in the... All-Star Super Rare division, yeah, the Star Super Rare. So we've got Kimmich, we've got Vinny Jr., we've got Pedri, Nkunku, Chumene, Upamecano, Mane, Veerman, Courtois, Lewandowski. They're all in the pool. Now, the only mm-hmm. person that gets that is number one, right? But that's the only chance I've got to win one of these cards, if that makes sense. So with that pool now looking as appealing as I wanted it to be, I've... Uh, I've tried to, so the difficulty with the combos for me is me not letting my heart rule my head and just picking four Celtic cards. I need, I have not got, a, I'm not going to play rare heart to pursue this. I think I need a super rare keeper to pursue that, you know? Uh, so I need to play Soraya or Viviano. Oh, shit, I absolutely shat my pants here. I thought I'd seen a goalkeeper out of a team somehow. <laughs> um, just because the game, uh, anyway, I thought an error happened there. So I, I'd, I'd taken the grown-up approach to put Trippier into that team because I think at home at Bournemouth he's very like 100 capable versus mm. like I don't know like a Taylor or a Maeda or you know 
uh, somebody else who might get 60 minutes, might get 30 minutes. That's the problem I've got with some mm-hmm. of those cards. Whereas he gets 90. He's got a great fixture. He's at home and done the rest of it. So that's the one I'm the most excited about. It's Soraya and goals. Away to Osasuna. I'm hoping there's no more than one goal scored by Osasuna. I think that's quite possible. Trippier, Celtic players that fill in as Hitate, Kyogo and McGregor unique. So that's the one I'm probably the most excited for, like SO5 wise. But when I was looking at your team, Stish, like the same kind of thing, I think with uh, a few of the cards that I'm quietly like, oh, I can't wait to watch them this week. Mm. When I was looking at your teams, um, I know you're saying you're not too constant, right? But you're under 23 super rare, man. I, it's tough fixtures for everyone except the striker. But like if they, you know, if they get a good result, they will score very well. All those yeah. guys, you know, unique away at Rangers, Veerman, uh, home at Feyenoord. And then Jesus Ferreira, obviously playing uh, the Quakes. You know, that's going to be, me and Harry reckon that Jesus Ferreira's killing this weekend, you know? I hope so. I hope so. Yeah, I think the youth, so I went, I kind of like thought a little bit about my strategy this week and it was like, I can go heavy into Challenger Pro or or like U23 Pro. But when I, did, I looked at Challenger Pro and looked at fixtures and I thought, I'm probably not, I don't have a lineup really because like if, like PSV and Ajax are probably like my sort of strongest holdings in those in those kind of pivots between U23 and Challenger. And I think they've they've both either got a tough fixture or a fixture it's hard to quite figure out who's going to start and given what I've got available. The only other option for me was like Salzburg. And I think like defensively, I'm looking good for Salzburg, but um, it's a bit unclear um, from what I could see, like whether Fernando is going to be like out long term or whatnot. And that kind of like de-stacked me a little bit in my options. I like to try and stack a little bit like a half and half maybe in challenger where you're up against a lot of big stacks and a lot of big teams and better fixtures than, than I'm up against. But I think Zenit are at home to um, Dynamo Moscow. And I think that that is not as easy a fixture as they've had, but um, Moscow haven't been as, as dominant this season as, as they had been um, in previous Mm -hmm. seasons. So I still expect Zenit to put a decent performance together and probably keep a clean sheet and, expect you know like the the usual suspects to be in those uh top top um places so I, I did i looked at u23 super and i thought you know i have that option of the unique i think obviously they've got a tough fixture but for a player like levitt who sits in that kind of like pivot to potentially getting into the sort of final third as well a fixture like this can be good for players like that because a lot of defensive actions a lot of like interceptions um you know quick turnover of the ball to the end like that sort of final third so I'm kind of gambling on Levitt have, having a good all-around score and potentially like, you know, a, an assist or something would be fantastic. But uh, the only the only problem for me really in that U23 was the defender um, options. And I think like my super rare options in defender for U23 was Daviv, who I decided to use in my um, U23 Pro, which I think is my main lineup this weekend. Um, and I thought because of Veerman having a slightly more tough fixture... But let me just flip Veerman into U23 Super Rare, where he might not be used as much by other people who hold him as well. I think most people who hold yeah. Veerman are using him in U23 Pro. So I just thought it was like a bit of di- a bit of differential. And versus my U23 uh, defensive options, I thought that Obispo Rare has the potential to score a 70 plus, whereas Araujo, I think, was my next best option at um, LA Galaxy. But He's another one of them players. He either scores under thirty-five or he scores over seventy. And I just thought Obispo's like mm. a, almost a guaranteed like fifty to eighty scorer, sometimes more. And um, whereas Araujo is like a thirty-five to sixty-five seventy. So I just decided I'm going to go with a rare. Having that unique in that lineup as well means that the use of that rare doesn't feel as like as risky. Um, and yeah, I think that looking at recent weeks as well especially in the pro divisions, how big some of the scores have been. The D2 to get into the reward is actually a little bit more obtainable if you've got a decent uh, sort of super rare lineup. So that was kind of my thinking with U23 this week was I could probably put a good lineup in there before I look at Challenger Pro as like a more strong option. So I decided to take what was left after U23 and and go into that D2 again. And and yeah, I think it is a good lineup. Like you said, I think there's potential there if the teams all perform well. So fingers crossed for that one, but um, but yeah, I think it's just looking at that Obispo like it's just like oh, I've got a rare in there that automatically makes me feel a little bit like different about it. But but like I said, I think he's got potential to score higher than Araujo, even with that the twenty five percent bonus. Um, 
So that was my risk. And I guess it just makes me look a little bit differently at that lineup. But fingers crossed for it. Captain Veerman and Super Rare Jesus, I think you'll be all right. Hopefully. I think you'll do all right. Fingers <laughs> crossed, buddy. Have you seen the, I'm just looking now, Stitch, at the Super Rare like, prize pool? Have you seen how crazy the tier ones are? For what In, division? Uh, U23. For the, yeah, for D2 under 23. At the yes, top, you've got Co- like Kochu, Kamavinga, Cody Gakpo's in there as a super rare. Wow. Tier I, I, one. Mate, this makes me feel sick because I won an Alan Varela for winning this division not so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> this makes me feel... And then I've come third as well before and won a, an Arakai who's f- fallen off the face of the earth. So this prize pool it's looks nice, yeah. light years ahead. Gvardiol's in there, João Felix, Kenneth Taylor, Thiago Almada, Nicholas Seivold, mm. uh, uh, Divine Wrench, Kunde, Alban Lafont, Badi Ashiel. This is ridiculous. That is actually, I didn't actually look at the tier one. I always kind of look at the tier two because I think realistically, like yeah. what, it, you know, tier two is like, I could, you could hope to get around there. Anything over that is a bonus. Mm-hmm. But that tier one pool is actually insane. I didn't even look at it. Ridiculous. I looked at tier two and I thought there's a couple of players that I, I wouldn't mind winning there. You know, even like Obispo is in tier two. Like you can he win. Is, yeah, a- I'm looking at him right now. Levitt in there. Jorgen yeah. Larson's in there. Santiago Moreno. Tati Castellanos. This is ridiculous, really, compared to like the off season or, or summer under 23 pools, which is, it makes sense. Like I get it, but it's just fascinating to see how, like Gakpo is a tier one. How in the world is that That's happening? Insane. That's a much better tier one pool than what's in All Star Super Rare. Like it's ridiculous. There's good guys in here, like Neuer, really De Jong, Cruz, and all that, but there's no Gakpos or anything like that. We'll work this out. Gavi, Gavi is in the star under 23 Super Rare pool. Fair enough. Yeah. With, like, I get it, but like he's not he's not Gakpo's price, is he? Let's be honest. Surely, no. there's no way. Maybe no. the rookie ones would have been like, the rookie super rare because the rookie super rares were possibly Vlahovic is in there. There's no way Vlahovic is, is more expensive as a super than Gakpo for me again. I think he's a bundle card, but eh? he is. Yeah, Vieman's in this thing's fair, which makes sense. Jota, Tuameni, Pedri, Vinny Junior. Yeah, I get it, but I don't know. Some of them are. I just don't get how Gakpo is a T one. Is basically what I'm trying it's to. Crazy, yeah. yeah. Trying to get enough. quite excited now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pretty, pretty so happy the big divisions can be fun if you get into them. Um, I see. I've only really looked at that star super rare pool because that's the when the prize pools come out. That's the first thing I look at, and is it something in there I want to win? And that's the first week I've looked at it and went, "Yeehaw, let's go, <laughs> <laughs> let's go and get it." So, uh, aye, it's good to look at those pools because, like as well, we were talking about this as well and Harry that this is where you're going to reveal to me right so we were talking Stish right see with the re- renewed prize pools right and I, I, I'm, I'm sure everyone at home is up to speed with it so I don't need to regale them with the ins and outs of it all but they're putting more onus on specialist underdog and all-star they're extending prize pools they're making them bigger and longer fatter short, you know all that good stuff and um, the increase in particular in like underdog under 45 and the specialist competitions like the number of cards that are going to be added into those prize pools come game week three ten, and who knows what happened beyond there as far as the calendar goes. Um, I said on the stream, you'd have to be a moron not to get a little specialist footprint because that's always the words of wisdom in this community is you call somebody a moron and then things happen somehow. <laughs> but, um, but Harry Boy has got a specialist limited team out now. <laughs> <laughs> who you got Harry who did you get happened. Harry put me out of my misery I don't know I don't know what came came over me to be honest um, yeah it was just looking at my my lineups last night and yeah they, they look they look good like there's some really good fixtures and I'm, I'm massively excited for them but because I only have three four ish I don't even have uh, an all-star rare team that I'm like looking at being like wow like I can't wait for this because I don't have a playing goalie so I'm like you know what I, I need I, I think I need to dip down and um, yeah I dipped down into the uh the limited market and yeah, got myself a, a specialist team. I was just having a bit of fun to be fair on Sora Data. I was just toggling by, you know, L15, under 40, whatever, see what I could find. Obviously I needed two of them um, and I got a little stack going on. So I bought, I mean, I don't think it's a great fixture, uh, but I've got the St. Etienne goalkeeper, Dreyer or Dreyer um, yeah. and Yvan Macon or Mycon. Um, cool. Yeah, the wing back. So I've got a little stack. I think he cost me, Goalie was like 35 quid. McCon was like 19 quid. Um, and they're, they're away, to be fair. But he had a really good score last week. Both of them actually did. McCon scored. So I'm probably probably a bit of recency bias. But they were both L15 under 40. I thought, you know what? 
I'm just going all in basically. Yeah. If they if they get battered, they get battered. If they don't, then hopefully I can sort of um gain on that. And then I brought in the main man, Kyle Henrique Quinny, um, who obviously we spoke video. about. We did the video on on Sora TV uh, earlier on this week, and he was one of my yeah my my specialist picks, wasn't he? To be fair, um, yeah. although he's not L15 under 40, I think he's like a I think he's my highest actually. I think he's like 62 maybe. Um, but yeah, his AA has been phenomenal recently. He's been on all set pieces uh, for for Monaco, and he's been getting assists uh, whilst doing so as well. And I think he was how much did he cost me? 30 uh no he was my most expensive 44 pounds um for a limited and then uh, as my as my midfielder i've got musa dumbia who plays for sashu or sashu have i said Sushu. that right in yeah. league two uh in the french league they're at home i've tried i've tried to pick you know teams or players with with decent enough fixtures bar in the the sort of saint etienne situation um and then up front i've got felipe anderson um who, yeah, I, I, you know, I haven't really watched him play for a, for a few years now since he he left West Ham and stuff. But he's hot and cold. But that's what you're going to get with specialist players. Like they're not yeah. going to be hot all the time. You can't afford them to be. But I'm just looking at his his L L15 is 52. He, he banged a nice little 77 against Feyenoord, 63 against Napoli, 49 against uh, Midget Land when they lost. I think they lost five one, didn't they midweek? So um, yeah, I'm I'm hoping he sort of because he was. It seemed like he was the only. Um, hope in that team actually midweek. I think he had like five key passes. I think he was trying to create a lot, but for whatever reason, his team weren't, um, yeah, helping him out in a, in any way. But yeah, it's it's a fun team. I've paid hundred and fifty pound for a specialist limited team, and it just gives me an extra five players to to cheer on. And I'm like, and that's kind of I know I've had to pay for that, but it's almost priceless in the sense that I have a small gallery, so like it, it means a bit more to me. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the, the it's a nice team. The specialist as well is like those. If you've got two of those players in the sort of the L15 under 40, um, if they have a good game week, you're laughing because the rest of your players who have the better yeah. averages just have an average or above average game and you can be right in amongst it. And if with the improvement of the prize pools in a few weeks' time, if you know, if if you've got good players that score like in that sort of fifty to sixty range and one that can potentially like kick on from there, you might only have to pick up the odd like little uh, under 40 average card here and there to make sure you've got that entry or you know potentially you can put them into the underdog sometimes and um yeah those those sort of like averages under 40 so long as they're not like the f the freak players who just end up in there because they've been out injured or something in their last few games were not good you can normally pick one of those players up for like one to three quid like in the week and still have your entry every weekend i like i like entering uh, that division my my team's a bit weird i just looking at it but before I, before i move on to what i've got you your shout andrea there got me looking cuz i i'm a holder of etienne green but i do believe that he's like his misfortune up to this point in the season is probably going to cost him his starting place so i think drea will actually become the number 1 um after this game week it'll be interesting to see i think i think um i think etienne green might be back from suspension this game so we'll be waiting to see who gets back in because i i'm expecting drea to keep that number one spot. I think that I think that the patience may have run a bit thin for for Green. So I think that was a good shout, and it made me have a little look online uh, to see what he was going for now. And there you are, Harry, the cheapest one available on the market. So trade my <laughs> name, trade back up. <laughs> Flipping He's back up thirty seven quid. There you go. Try and get your money back. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I think that's a good. I think you got a good a good team there, and. Um, yeah, I think I might even pick up a limited Dreyer myself. But uh, yeah, I think I'm going to have a quick look at what I went with um, in my in my um, specialist limited. I went for, so I've got Yabra, uh, Melamulinstein, uh, Yuto Nagatomo at um, Tokyo, Serdar Gurla, who uh, who put up a, a score of about 78, I think, in the week. And, um, and Yunus Atgun, who is one of my favourite cards that I hold in limited. Um I don't think he's quite hit like the white hot heat that I'm expecting him to hit um, for Galatasaray. He his all around as a forward is fantastic because he puts he's a really tricky kind of like wide forward player. He's really fast, so like he's always putting like crosses in. So he's always got he's always quite high in the like attempted assists. But for whatever reason, I just think that Galatasaray maybe have just started to hit. Um, they're starting to like find their feet a little bit. So um, I've got big hopes for him this season and I've put him in as like my over 60 
Um, but he's only like managed a few decisives, but when he does get a decisive, he tends to be in the sort of 80 to 90 range. So fingers crossed nice. for them. I'm definitely one of my more um, favoured lineups, I think, for the weekend. But always love a, a specialist entry. Who you got, Quinny? I had to take the contrarian approach this week and I didn't buy any L15 under 40s. I didn't really have any that I was particularly motivated to get in a team. So normally what I'll do is, as everyone knows, I'll keep like three good cards and then just get the two best L15s and then that's that lineup and it's the first one I'll make and then I'll build the rest thereafter. But I've now got three or four cards that I would consider really good that I've just filtered back through all the regions, if, if, if that makes any kind of sense. So... I'm actually expecting, I've got one, two, three, four, five, yeah, six, let's see, I've got seven limited teams, I expect six of them to be in amongst it, you know, the only one that I wouldn't be as confident about is the last underdog one, which is the normal underdog, actually underdog under 45 looked much better this game week, and I think like, you know what it's like when you open underdog sometimes, like, sometimes your guys are so crap, you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to put them in under, an underdog because <laughs> you're expecting guys to be in there who are L15, like 49 and 48, and you've got a guy that's like 32, and you know this guy's this guy's just not even going to cut it here. Whereas I think with that L15 under 45, like the fixture power I think is even more heightened because mm. that 45 cap is way more hard. It's way harder to get a, a cheeky Ruby Diaz under it or... You know, I'm just thinking about guys I've done it with, you know, an underdog like Jordan Morris or Ruby Diaz, you know, some of these guys or whatever. Um, so, the, uh, in my opinion, underdog 45 is over underdog. And that's, uh, uh, no, actually, I've probably got quite good teams. Actually, I think all seven of them could be in amongst the cards, to be honest with you. I think I've managed <laughs> to get uh, a few really good builds. All right, listen to this, right? This is the most Quinny team I think I've ever made in my life, right? In terms <laughs> of, like, I could just throw them out, right? Goalkeeper, maybe not as much, right? But King Lampy is an all-star goalkeeper. Carter Vickers is in defence. And then a midfield duet of Kostic and Goretzka. And then Kyogo up front. So, bit of Celtic. Big King Lampy and goals. And then that midfield is to die for. So, hopefully. And again, like the Goretzka or the Kostic or the Lampy, they would be the specialist cards that I would normally be using elsewhere. So, I'm hoping, because there's 70 star limiteds, man. I'm thinking with this team... If they bang, like, I'm thinking top 100. Normally, when I'm making these limited teams, I'm thinking, ah, if I can get top 700, top 300, that's fine. But with this team, I've got a wee bit more. Do you know what? Like, Celtic should pump St Mirren. Vickers and Kyogo should rule it. Lampy's Lampy. And those two midfielders, as I say, if they turn up, they're, they're capable of doing anything. So I'm kind of excited just to be actually not in specialist this week and have that almost, uh, I say that kind of, because as well, the, the kind of last thing I'll say on that, right, is one thing I kind of thought building that, that, this kind of strategy this week is with there being specialists in La Liga, Bundesliga, Jupiler, mm. all that other stuff that's going on as well. I think a lot of differential cards will be sucked out of the regions and go into being the L50 under 40 card for the Jupiler, for the Bundesliga, for this or for that or whatever. So all star limited. I'm hoping I maybe catch a week in a, 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 a you know, an opening of the tide and I just make a wee run through and <laughs> get a wee cheeky star limited out of nowhere. Hey, you know, and. <laughs> Go back to type after the international break. I like that. Yeah, I'm looking at, well, do you know what? Another thing I did this weekend for the first time properly, because I picked up another um, legend card. I feel like legend cards are quite cheap now because maybe the interest has waned a little bit. You know, like the, winning a legend card isn't like that exciting if you've already got like the best kind of legend cards. But um, I I did all right in it the last few weeks and because I picked up a Zidane just as a like for my own reasons as a collector. It's a great card, uh, that one. I thought, <laughs> I picked up a Brian Laudrup, who, you know, atten- essentially is like having Kimmich, right? So now I've got Zidane and Laudrup in my midfield. I've got Rodri Gal, who is like centre-back for Zenit. Philip Cohn, a goalkeeper at Salzburg, and I've got Rodrigo up top. So I'm like, that team, if you've got a couple of, or if you've got two or three legends and you just put in a couple of more good cards, you, you I'd imagine you could, should get among the rewards there. I'm hoping anyway. I'm, I don't mind picking up another... If I can pick up another legend as a reward, then I should have a really strong entry there every week if I want it. Um, but yeah, I like... You know, like, the thing with legends cards, if you win, at worst case, you're probably winning a card worth about 20 quid. But best case, you know, it might be worth 150 quid. And, like, if you if you kind of look at that as a bit of an ETH grinder, if you've got, like, a lot of limited cards, which I've, I've managed to amass quite a few now, 
I've won, I win I win quite a few limited cards this season, which wasn't often the case for me before. But they're never great. But it means that you know I've got loads of options for those like the underdog and the specialist. And uh, yeah, definitely putting my teams together, I was almost like overrun with options for like those kind of L15 under 40s and under 45s but um yeah I just I lack a few of those like top end uh cards I've maybe got like five or six I actually sold a fair few uh, in the mid season like the sort of just before the season ended um just because I, I don't know I think like a lot of us were saying you know like, the limited supply is going to be a big thing and maybe it's time to get rid of limiteds and I felt a little bit like yeah you know I'm not really winning much in limited I could definitely afford to like let go of some of my like top end cards so I, I kind of sold like my sole and a few other players but um but yeah i found myself it just means now i'm just lacking a little bit on that top end but um but yeah like limiteds are fun there's a like the the opportunity to win rares as well with the yellow cards is is good right i, I think that's great and i think that that so rare probably sees these divisions as like the real sort of like step onto the ladder and progress because if you can win a rare card with you're limited, then, you know, that opens the door to the next level up for you. If you can pick up a couple of wins or, you know, maybe like use those wins to like fund a better, a better limited team or, and I think those are like, they're the progressors, aren't they? I think that's the point of these divisions. And um, like my brother-in-law won, um, he's won, he won a card in the, uh, you know, like the, what they call it again, the, the academy. So like my, mm-hmm. my brother and I had a win on Academy. He, he's only really playing limiteds at the moment. And he looks at that as an option on game weeks where he hasn't really got a great team to put out. Because I think he re- recognises that the all-star limited division is quite tough to get into the cards unless you've got a decent sort of dependable side. Whereas he saw the Academy and he's like, oh, I've got two players that should play. And I'd rather go in there and hope that I can put up like a 400, 450 score, which he, he managed. I think he finished like... I think he finished in the like top fifty, um, and he won a goalkeeper. Jesus. Granted, it was a sub goalkeeper, but it was going. Cool. that has played a few games this season, so could actually become useful. So, yeah, like as someone, mm, obviously, we we don't play uh, those divisions, so we can't really comment on like how useful they are. But speaking to people I know who are at that kind of level and they're trying to find their way up, and you know, it seems it seems to be working for them as a, as an alternative if you know they don't think they've got the minerals to like land in the cards with with the limiteds they've got. So I'm hoping that, you know, like that's so rare is seeing this and the potential to like kind of build on that. Cause it definitely feels like, you know, like there was always that hype about, Oh, where's the progress bar. And I feel like this is kind of the progress bar now. Right. Yeah, I think so. Definitely. Like the, the at least they're actively like, pursuing that academy thing to where like yeah to be honest like it seems from somebody who's like been in the even i've been in the game for a long time now i'm not saying it's complicated but like there's just there's just a few moving parts let's just put it that way probably you know there being four divisions like i, I get it there's a, there's a progress within within the academy it's fine but like because i haven't played it because i don't like i don't even think can i play it i don't think i can can i i can can i not okay the so, so what yeah. i'm saying is like I got one of my best mates who's like sort of been um, like I'm in an R and about signing up and stuff. And, you know, obviously we go to the gym all the time together and, you know, I, I speak about so rare naturally to him and he loves fancy football. Like he plays FPL quite religiously um, mm. and and he has now signed up to so rare. But like the first sort of big question with him was like, sweet. Well, the question he asked me was like, so, you know, what, like, what should I do? I know that's, a very open-ended question but and I was like like to be honest like with the amount that you're wanting to put in which ain't a crazy amount um but it's like sort of enough to sort of get going especially in limited but I was basically saying to him like there's probably a couple ways you could play you could probably go into specialist limited and start building out these like have a few like OP cards or above L15 under six, uh, over 60s and then have have the lower guys to sort of be able to compete or you could go like the under 23 route and just by younger guys that you kind of, um, you know, they might not be playing right now, but you might buy a couple of limiteds of whoever who in six, 12 months time, um, do you think are going to break through and do it that way? But then the pros and cons to that was, well, if he's doing the under 23 route, he's not engaging the game as in like, he's not actively playing SO5, meaning that like, he's not getting his fantasy kick out of it. Right. Cause that's what really sparked the interest. Cause he has the fantasy kick through playing FPL. Sure. So 
that then went, okay, well, okay, well, let's scrap. Well, we didn't scrap the under 23 thing. We just said, okay, well, maybe put that to the to the side a bit and maybe just focus in on underdog limited or um or specialist limited, like we said. And then on the side, if you are winning cards and you're getting a bit of success, you know, buy those or win those under 23s that way, if that makes sense. Like don't make that the primary sort of reason you're playing. So make it that like you want to play SO5. So I think that is the engagement, like that, that is the bread and butter. I know people can just trade and that's fine. But if if you if you want that like FPL type of kick, you need teams. It's as simple as that. Like you can't just buy players and wait for them. It's just not the same experience. Um, and he's not necessarily coming into it like wanting to make bucket loads of money. It's just that it's that FPL kick, and you mm. can get that if you are playing specialist. If you are playing underdog, of course you can play the All Star Limited. Like there's there's other competitions, but I think for him to have his best chance at starting and having quote unquote success. I think he has to start in those divisions, in, in my opinion. I wouldn't throw him into an all-star limited and have him compete with Douglas Santos, Wendell and, and Malcolm and then Tadic. Like, I, I know that's like a bit further thinking, but like, it's probably just no point for now. Just just go learn the game for a bit. Go yeah. play specialist, go play underdog and see how it works. And if you fancy punning a bit more because you want to compete you know, to a higher level, great. If you don't, you don't. But that was kind of... But it was just an interesting conversation, like him asking me, what should I do? I was a bit like, well... I don't know. Like, it's tough. Like, because I've been playing for so long now, it's, it's hard to, like, almost relate to a completely beginner. Like, it, it really is. I found that tough. Yeah, I definitely. Think the, the, the thing I always think about with this, especially, like, now, is everyone always, want, you know, everyone always wants to put in the minimum possible to have fun and engage and win to some extent. I seen somebody, they tagged me on Twitter, um, they got over 440 points in whatever academy division they were in with one limited card. Not, mm. you know, they're allowed two. He done it with one. Okay. It was like Gonzalo Higuain, which I don't suppose costs much more than a tenner, you know, yeah. give or take, you know. So, like, that, so see, see, to be able to get out that progression bar of the academy, out to get out of that kind of crash, you will end up with a couple of cards that you'll win because that's the way they kick you out is you've won something, you know. So, mm. you know, you can easily collect and, you know, the stuff we were doing on Surya TV earlier this week, Harry, and I did another video um, in a similar vein on, on my own. There's so much, there's, you can get half a dozen cards for under or around 100 quid of guys that feasibly score 60 plus regularly enough and can do 70 plus when, you know, things really happen for them. And if you can get five of those guys for 100 quid, walk through the academy and pick up, I don't know how many rewards you get by the end of it, four or something like that, four or five, you then end up with a little contingent of 10 cards and that underdog 45 you don't need a goalkeeper, you know. So even if you've just walked out with a fucking Higuain and a Pozuelo and some other random guy from MLS and a random guy from Japan, and then you win some other people on top of that you've never heard of, playing that underdog 45, like between those 10 cards, you can maybe get on good enough game weeks like three nice fixtures and then well, maybe the sketchy one you're cross, you know. So like I think that's I think that's the the path that everyone is going to walk down now. And then once you get once you get to that underdog 45 stage, that's when people who really know their stuff or they've maybe got a bit of a, a better taste for a player or a better eye for a player or maybe, a, you know, they can spend £300 on their first team or £200 or whatever, they'll then branch out and find specialists in La Liga or, you know, the underdog normal or whatever it might be. So, uh, yeah, I always think like now there's never, there's never been a better time to try and play this with as little money as possible, you know, yeah. like that sense. You can Definitely. start off with as little as you like now. And then from there, it's really just whatever you want to do with your spare money in terms of you want to go get a rare, you want to go get. And that's a big part of the transformation I've put my gallery through this year has been with that in mind that like rares are like a thing. Like rares are like a real asset to me. Like if I've got a rare of somebody, it's a big deal now. When those After like two months of limited, and you can kind of think of, you know, we've all done it. You know, you're thinking in the future, oh, well, that's a thousand a season, more teams, more leagues, that's an hour thousand, an hour thousand, da, 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 da. So super rares and uniques in particular and rares fall into the category now for me. Like I, for me personally, like I don't deal in them too often. I don't buy in and out of rares and supers like that often because the ones I'm, I'm going to bring in, I'm thinking, well, I, like, this is a real card I'm bringing in now because before limited, you know, rares were the kind of, you know, for lack of a better term, the riffraff of the platform. You know, you just trade rares about, and, oh, they come out all the time and whatever. Whereas now it's limited, you know, tier threes and tier twos, that's just saying, you know, getting a quid or two quid for some of them sometimes is a dream, um, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, so rares now, I think we're all forecasted it at the time, but they're now getting to that point 
in the platform where they are very separated from limiteds in terms of the teams, the cost of the team, the type of player that engages with rares, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, yeah. yeah, thinking Probably about it now, me. like. <laughs> You 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 made a point there of it being like the cheapest time to enter, and I think it is because you could probably feasibly put together a a a good like a good um, L fifteen under forty five underdog team. So you know goalkeeper, just four outfield players that have that kind of average. I I'm certain you could do it for less than fifteen quid. Absolutely certain you could find a player that plays every week that maybe has an average like of forty to forty five. Um, that may have it in them to get a decisive, you know, if you can get four starters there. You, or if they're at home and they can get the 57. Average. Yeah. And that's fantastic. Like, I think in that division, you know, like. Yeah, you can easily hit hit something. And if they if they do um, expand these prize pools to like pay out more often to people that, that maybe score less, then then they get the buys of the win. I think that's the thing that, that they want, right? That, that's what I find with like people that I've brought into the game, like friends and that, who maybe are a little bit disengaged with it but as soon as they get their first win they're in they're in they're in my whatsapp going what do you think of this player what do you think of that i'm trying to buy this and it's like until they got that first win i would hear from them once every like month or something they yeah. get the first win i'm hearing from them every every couple of days it's like that buzz, <laughs> so i think see, to give you some of the intel stash see on those underdog competitions a lot of the prize pools are now in like 1100 ish or so mm. maybe 1200 they're all going up to like 15 1600 so so it's a massive like huge jump, jumps. Yeah. That's an underdog forty-five specialists. You know all that they're all taking huge jumps up in card payouts, and it is the back end. You know there's a I think there's like a maybe a no buff in the stars, maybe a small buff in tier ones, a decent buff in tier twos, and there's a huge tier three tail on these things, obviously. But getting an extra like three four hundred places paid out, you know, like that's the moans that we hear all the time. Is like, oh, I had this score and I still didn't win. You know, those cards yeah. will hopefully now happen. I think it's a good shout. I think it's a good shot. Yeah, I had a, a contemplation last night going back to that to making that specialist team. And it was, I had the bones of an underdog rare team. Like I don't have many rares, right? So for me to mm -hmm. make an underdog rare team is pretty tough to, to have four that are eligible, right? But I had two, two forwards and I, I could have played Jonathan David and Fatty in there, right? So I was like, nice. you know what? This could like fixture wise, this is this is kaboom, okay. Mm. And then I was like, okay, well, I need a mid and I need a, a defender, obviously, because I, I I didn't have any um, the the would have played and, and done anything for me. But then I looked at like how many people had entered, and then I looked at the prize pool, and I was just a bit like, you know what, I'm probably better off just building a limited, a specialist limited team here. I don't like. I was probably like I was looking at Lee Kang in, like I was probably probably going to get his mid in for me because he had a good. Well, he has a good fixture this weekend and I, I like him anyway. So I would have kept him um, as a rare, but that was like 0 0.2. And then I was going to buy like, um, you know, Fontas, the uh, sport in Kansas City yep. defender. Yeah, I was going to buy him, which was, to be fair, he was only like 80 quid. So like you're looking at like, say, yeah, 280 pound for those two players. I wouldn't have used Fan Fontas ever again, I'll be honest, because he's not under 23. But I would have used Lee Kang in. But then for me, it just didn't, <laughs> like I just couldn't get up for it with the prize pool. And yeah. then I looked at the specialist limited one. I was like, well, I can spend 150 quid like I have done on, on five players. Um, one of them being a goalie as well, which I can use further on as long as he obviously keeps his place, whatever. And the pri I can win star race. Like it, yeah. it, it don't make sense really. Like if you look at it in that terms, but that's what we're playing. You play what's in front of you. Like, and, yeah. and I decided I opted not to, to make the underdog team and, and sort of just bounced into the, to the limited. Yeah, I, I can totally get that, man. I've done, you know, it is hard to motivate yourself to, and Lee Kang is a fantastic player, right? But <laughs> in that scenario, I can't motivate myself to spend that money. Like, yep. you know, why would I do this? feels like counterproductive. I'm deliberately buying a mediocre person for this game week yeah. to then maybe I'll use them again, you know, like, <laughs> or I kind of liked them anyway, you know, like it's kind of, it's hard rather than Lee Kang is limited. What is that going to be really? Like 25 quid or something? <laughs> I'll have a look now. Yeah, probably not not much, mate, to be fair. Buttons, man. I'll have a look. Yeah. You know, Another that's an easier, think... that's much easier. You, know, you still get the weekly Kang in buzz, you know, he scores the goal. You can still be like, fucking mm -hmm. knew that kid was happening, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and I, yeah, I, if he's still underdogs, then fantastic. I think I was talking to um, someone on Twitter about this recently, and they were they kind of asked the classic question of like, how where where do you suggest I get started? And and I did, I did say, you know, like you can enter the limited like, underdog without a goalkeeper. But I thought, like, maybe So Rare should look at the 
the underdog divisions is like a position where I, you know, most people who haven't got a goalkeeper are probably going to be looking at that as their main entry anyway, because it's just the only thing they can enter realistically, unless you yeah. enter like a non-playing goalkeeper somewhere and get a cheap one. But I think that they should maybe focus on having maybe one one game week a month or or two a month where um, all of the wins sort of like from tier one upwards are goalkeepers so that like it creates that 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 for me creates Ooh. progression like if you if you're a four card player and you don't have a goalkeeper but you win one that instantly puts you in the mix with all the other divisions that you couldn't reach and that's surely that's progression i mean i think the problem is the price of goals like most goalkeepers are on par with a lot of sort of star and tier one outfielders but I think that they did year, maybe about a year and a half ago. Do you remember they did do a like a special, a special weekly where Goal every win, card win was goalkeepers. Yeah. This was, I think I won. You know, th- this was before limited, so it was all rare goalkeepers as well. But um, I won a goalkeeper that actually played in that in that game week. It wasn't he? Wasn't one of the better ones, but he was useful, and it meant it opened up the uh, Asian divisions for me because I didn't have an Asian goalkeeper until I won that one. So like that helped me cr- progress in the early days and I think that like at the limited level they should definitely look at um sort of special weeklies where you can win a limited goalkeeper um you know without owning one but maybe the thing is like trying to close that off so that it is purely maybe that's almost like an academy special where it's like you can win a goalkeeper because yeah you, you want to almost de- deter people who have like like the limited whales if you like from entering that and just winning another goalkeeper that they didn't really need or they're just going to try and sell. But maybe you make a, a division where it's like, if you enter this, it's the only one you enter this week. But if you if you win, you win a goalkeeper and you've got a good chance. I don't know. Like, I think it'd be an interesting, an interesting test. But whether or not, uh, just getting it right, getting that balance right, trying to like maybe deter a lot of the big players from seeing it as an opportunity to like sweep it up. But, you know, I think in terms of progression, I think winning a goalkeeper is massive for players who are trying not to spend that much money, especially if there's a goalkeeper who plays, obviously. And that obviously is quite important here. It's like, if you win, it has to be a, a useful goalkeeper, not just a sub, because, you know, that's worse than a tier three, basically. Yeah. Mate, um, so that's uh, such a good, a good, uh, like, way of thinking about it. Like, there must be a way for them to, like, code a th- a criteria or requirement to where like you can't have any like okay playing goalkeepers would be harder but something like you know you can only enter this academy or you know variation of this division if you don't have a goalkeeper in your gallery like it needs to be that yeah. like like you're saying how how do you limit these how do you stop the limited whales sort of swooping somehow just doing it where like yeah there's there's no, you you can't have a goalie in your gallery you have to just have outfielders and then you know you enter that tournament if you come top 50 out of 10,000 whatever it is then those 50 have got a goalkeeper they're on, they're on the ladder now they're like they're flying aren't they in terms of like before that they had four players or you know four five to whatever outfield players that you know without a goalkeeper are quite useless but in that specific division and obviously in an underdog they become you know they have utility and and I think yeah, that's actually a really interesting um, concept, to be fair. I like the sound of that. Yeah, just open. It would open them up to more divisions the following week. As soon as you've got that goalkeeper, you're kind of, you, you're committed then, aren't you? Like, if you're going uh, to, in, in any kind of level, financial, like, entrance, if you like, into the game weeks, having the goalkeeper is the main hump. If A lot of people I know that, like, maybe have a few rares or have a few limiteds, but... They, they just, for whatever reason, did, they can't justify pay, paying out for a goalkeeper because of the other cards they've got. But if they won one, then they might be a bit more comfortable dipping into, like, improve the other parts of their team. The goalkeeper's just so, it's so much more expensive than any of the other players. Like, the you know, if, if they play, they're like, like, so like 30, 40 quid at limited is probably like the cheapest sort of playing goalkeeper that you can find. Um, and for, mm-hmm. for people that are trying to only spend, like, 20 quid on like their sort of like initial teams and dip their toes in that's you know that's a lot of money and but if we can try and navigate a way that allows them to win that kind of 20 30 quid card because there will be goalkeepers you know and like now that these these kind of improvements they're making to the prize pools in the way that 
the tiers are kind of like a bit like more dynamic in the lead through the game week so that, you know, if a goalkeeper gets dropped or gets injured, they fall out of the prize pool and someone yep. else comes in. Then, you know, like with those kind of implementations come in as well, then you'd hopefully think that, you know, if this sort of reward was available, then the winners would be getting a useful goalkeeper or... So I think that like they should definitely be considering that because I think goalkeepers are like the gateway to a real um, progression for players that are just dipping their toes in. And we've got the underdog now. It's like the perfect place to do it. You don't need a goalkeeper to enter it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it makes, it makes complete sense. I just think they need to add a, a requirement that says like you can't own another goalkeeper, basically. Yeah, I like that. For, like, and it doesn't have to be a weekly competition, but like you said, once, once a month or whatever it is, make the underdog or like a variation of it like to where yeah you can't own goalkeepers and and you can win them in there they're, they're, they're the only things in there basically playing goalkeepers um and, yeah. and sort of go from there yeah i love that great romance around that as well in terms of you know like finishing that you know, i like that kind of academy angle to it maybe as well because by the time they maybe finish the academy it then kind of increases your probability of ending up with a limited team through mm. the progression of that if you know what i mean like because even though the cards you pick up, you might get lucky and maybe one of them's a goalkeeper, but of course nothing's guaranteed. So maybe if there was maybe something else that maybe just increased the odds of by the time you came out of that, it doesn't need to be a great keeper. It could be somebody on the bench. It could be somebody in a Division 2 team that's bottom of the league. Like It really could be could be anything, but it's something to play with um, going forward. So yeah, I love that. Very, very romantic. I love it. <laughs> But with the so all those prize pools are now getting jacked up to to, to France um, <laughs> for <laughs> underdogs and specialists and everything, right? <laughs> Starting from game week three ten, which is the first game week after the international break, right? So I'm going to be doing. I'm sure everyone else at home will be doing it. We'll be diving into Soria Data Lineup Builder with all its new fancy features and functions and all that good stuff, and we'll be building game week three ten about a thousand times over through this international break. As we've seen before, and again, this maybe is for the benefit of anyone who's kind of new in town, if you like, normally around these international periods, a lot of people start to do a bit of spring cleaning, you know, sort of gallery out a little bit, maybe like Harry's done, pick up maybe a wee cheeky limited or two, or, you know, um, you know, wh- whatever it is it might be. So I always kind of highlight this, and I want to get your guys' thoughts or maybe even previous experience with dealing with us, but like in these international breaks, what I've noticed is like the first couple of days, or even like now-ish, up until maybe like Tuesday or Wednesday, a lot of people are in the same mindset. I've not got teams, not got anything on. Let's look ahead, right? What am I missing? I'm mid the goalkeeper. Finally try and sell that guy. Finally try and buy that guy, whatever. And then after that, the market almost kind of seizes up a little bit. In my experience, mm. it kind of, you know, everyone's kind of like, I'm taking a week off. And most people just kind of go away from Discord to go away from the computer. No one gets back to you on DMs for a while. Direct offers go into the abyss, you know, of the internet <laughs> and never come back. And uh, that's the way it tends to go. So if you are thinking about doing stuff then now, bear that kind of thing in mind that the now so many people will be interested in coming in to do trades, coming into the market to try and like, you know, do the spring cleaning and whatever. With these international breaks, with your squad and strategy and all that kind of stuff, if you guys get anything that pops to mind or whatever. Harry, do you want to go first, mate? Yeah. Um, so yeah, for this, like this 307 game week, this, this like the next game week up now, um, this, midweek like I've I've got nothing I've got like two playing players so there's nothing much going on for me um like because my gallery is so small I can keep on top of it quite easy in that sense and I know I don't really need much barring any injuries let's say this weekend touch you know touch wood nothing crazy happens in that sense where I need to adjust but yeah looking forward to like 308 like I I, I could actually I can throw out a team like I I yeah, and and under 23 as well if, if Costa 10 like if he ends up playing for mm. for Portugal um, I can actually get out a, a decent looking team. Costa, I can get Nico out um, for Wales. During Timber might have a go, but there is Argentinian games as well Be um, to be aware of. There's Argentinians. I think there's a couple MLS, cheeky MLS games. There's a few Mexican league games and then there might be a few Chinese games as well. I was just looking on the, the game we calendar then. So I can actually get out a team. So like where, you know, it ain't going to be easy for most people to do that um, at any level because, you know, you need players that obviously play for their national team for the most part, unless you are Argentinian, Mexican, you know, South American based galleries. Um, but yeah, it won't be anything um, like I won't treat this sort of period of like, you know, what can I like, what can I sort of uh, sell in my gallery? What can I bring in? Like I'm at a place where like I'm pretty content with it. Like I, I've I've sort of set myself up now to where 
got a few players coming back from injury after the international break, uh, coincidentally. So I'm, yeah, I'm just sort of buzzing for that, like you said, the three the three ten situation, and hopefully, um, like kick on from there really with 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 none of my players sort of picking up any international break injuries. What about you, Stish? Yeah, it's funny. You just mentioned three oh eight, so I just had a quick look on the lineup builder to just see what my options are as well. And I I I think I've got like <laughs> half decent potential entry in maybe a couple of divisions because I've got a fair few goalkeepers available. And one of them is like Muric, who who likely will play for uh, Kosovo as well. So um, they're playing Northern Ireland, um, which isn't an awful fixture for them. Um, you know, I think they'll they can give a good game. I've got Marko Ilic as well, but I don't I don't know. Um, what the Serbia goalkeeper situation is there. He doesn't play often, but he has played. Um, so I've got potentially... I think it's Rakovic for Serbia. Yeah, I, I don't fancy him to get a game. So I think Muric is the only goalkeeper I've, that I've got that looks like they'll start um, looking at that. But yeah, like next week, um, I had a little look already and I don't have any goalkeepers available. So what I'm probably going to do next week is just enter like a four-player into the kind of... Um, into the All Star and just hope for the ETH. Like try and try and grind a bit of ETH. Hopefully the four players um, that that I've got. I think I've got like Guardiol, um, Sukic, uh, Matvienko, and you think Guardiol's going to get minutes for Croatia. He's probably got a better chance than he has been uh, at at Leipzig this season. <laughs> um, That's true. Yeah. yeah. So I I, I mean I, I don't think he's like nailed on for minutes because if his situation at Leipzig has anything to do with match fitness or then you know he might have the same problem when he gets um, on the international break. But given what's been going on for him, you know he he is available. So um, my other options really are um, let me have a look. I mean Samansky, who is I believe he should be okay to play, but he's still you know I don't fancy him to start for Poland. Kimpembe, who's out, I know he's out. My only other option potentially is Bale. Um, Tra- Harry, you might know better than me. Do you think Bale? Will play against Belgium or or not? Is he in the squad? Is um, he? P- possibly because I know Rambo's out. I haven't actually seen the Welsh um, the actual squad to be completely honest. Mm. So I'd have to have a look at that really quickly. But um, I know Bale was. I don't think Bale was on the bench. Was he for LA Galaxy in the uh, LAFC? Sorry, in their last yeah, game. Yeah, he started the last game. I think he started the last Did one. Did he start? Yeah. Okay, well, I mean, if there's no, yeah, there's no, if there's no reason for him to not be like in the squad, then I think he starts because, like I said, no mm-hmm. Rambo. Um, they'll definitely need somebody leading that team against Belgium, and and historically we have a lot of good fortune against Belgium over the past sort of five to six years, and and Bale's been a massive part of that, and I've been lucky enough to to watch a lot of that live. To be fair, the the old Cardiff City Stadium. So um, yeah, like yeah, I'd be shocked if he's if he's not starting. If, if yeah, if I had to put a bet down. Yeah, so he might be more useful then. He might be a little bit less of a risk than Guardio in that case. Um, and I mean, like, Sukic mm-hmm. isn't nailed on for um, either. So, I, and Yaramchuk, you know, he's another one who, like, doesn't start every game for Ukraine, um, but he's likely to get minutes. Matt, Matt Vienko, I did imagine, will start and probably score quite well, he, you know, whether he concedes or not. Um, so, yeah, I mean... It's just one of those hit and hopes. I've got something I can enter. I don't think I, I can't really look beyond that kind of all star. But yeah, looking at that three hundred eight, the, the following week, I definitely have maybe a potential U twenty three there. Um, possibly go into pro. I've got a couple of super rares that are actually playing as well. So yeah, I'll I'll, I'll have to have a proper look at that. I think the following week. But um, another thing I will say as well is like I don't know if you guys ever re- noticed this, but the sort of community tends to lose its mind during the international break. I don't know if it's just like out of boredom yes. or feeling disengaged from the game, but there's always some kind of drama that kicks off uh, during the international break. So if any if anyone listening sees anything kick off in the next few weeks, just take it with a pinch of salt. Nine times out of ten, it's just people a bit bored. Uh, the littlest thing can trigger them and end up going off on a rant on Twitter. Um, and I think uh, the international break, for some reason... It just sets people off every time. I, I don't know what it is, but there's always something <laughs> on the international break. So I'm going to be looking out for that. Any any uh, any kind of predictions on what that drama may be around? Uh, given we just got the good news of the prize pool being around, it could it could be something really 
weird because I'd like to hope there's no drama in the in the offing. You know, everyone seems quiet or happy. That now, you know, like, moment, yeah. <laughs> that's the kind of for once. <laughs> yeah, that's the kind of vibes I'm getting at the moment. It definitely feels but, like, um, doesn't it? No, I yeah. think that the, 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 the great point, Stash, because there is always a drama drama about something. Yeah, there is, and it's this time always, always. It's always the international break, but I think that maybe that's why they and made the announcements they did about the prize balls now, because maybe so rare are aware of like what the international break does to the user base. But uh, we've had the, the fact that we, we know that <laughs> these, these prize balls are being like improved before the international break comes. Maybe they're doing that to preempt any like, because that would have yeah. been it. If they didn't make that announcement, someone uh, would have been kicking off about prize balls during the international break without a doubt. Um, so yeah, it'd be interesting to see how this one goes. I wonder if they've like they've like managed to save themselves from a from an international break meltdown again. But uh, be interested to see what the drama is, if anything, because I can't think what else it could be now. Yeah, they've Probably shielded had any thoughts. No, I was just saying, like, just to, on the back end of that, like, yeah, it's, it's very clever timing, isn't it? I didn't think about it prior to what this just just said, but yeah, it, it is very very um, strategic timing, I guess, from their part. In terms of that announcement and improving prize pools and improving, so even like even the um, do you like, think we might get we might get big stuff over the international break? Do you think they might start doing lots of rollouts, maybe? Possibly, <sighs> I, I saw a bit of news today on um, you know, you remember when they announced the the partnership with the Argentinian FA, and uh -huh. obviously nothing's come of that yet. I, I know, obviously, we're not at the World Cup right now, but you'd like to think, well, we 16th, 16th of September, obviously. You know, World Cup starts 20th of November or 19th, whatever it is. Basically two months, right? Yeah. Could we could we see a few international team rollouts, you know? That would be yeah. interesting. Because, you know, why are you making um, a partnership with, with the Argentinian FA prior to a World Cup and, and, and not announcing anything? Like, they would just be... It just doesn't really make too much sense in my brain. But, you know, maybe there's something longer term that we don't know about, of course. Um, but, yeah, I, I think, yeah, Quinny, you could be spot on there. Maybe some some cheeky mm. little um yeah national team announcements that, that could be on the horizon yeah or, yeah i mean this would be the time i was to just do thinking there when you were talking sorry i was just like i wonder if like that is the strategy like stash is saying in the first place and then you were following on with is maybe this is a you know because we have had like scheduled like announcements from them before where they kind of ramp things up and then do, 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 and there's, here's the big part you know so maybe this is mm -hmm. just a we a we uh we kick on we'll see mm. um but yeah, hopefully it's not too long or too painful an international break for, for everyone and anyone uh, listening to this. I've got one hope at a team if All Black can play. I've got some pretty decent hopes for like one team over two game over two game two game weeks out of three kind of thing. Um, so yeah, it would definitely be a quiet one for me. I won't be doing many trades in the round as well, but or maybe who knows? Like you know, we'll see. But I think that's kind of everything, isn't it, guys? I think we're kind of yeah. there. And I wish everyone who's locked in good luck for the game week ahead uh, and hopefully uh, a international break that is uh, that is free of any drama or meltdowns um, I don't know what we're going to talk about on the podcast next week we're going to have to uh, we're going to have to come up with something in the middle of the international break aren't we we might have to get a quiz on the go or something that's it. Well, I'm not, I don't think Tony's was called up for Scotland, so we, we might be able to <laughs> we might be able to borrow Tony, Tony maybe we'll borrow something back in. Well, yeah, I think uh, Harry, uh, a great, has uh, deputised uh, fantastically well. Uh, congrats on your debut on the show, uh, and thanks, thanks for coming through. And uh, to everyone who's listening, good luck, um, and be back next week for another episode of the End Product Podcast. Don't forget, like, subscribe, share, and. Uh, tweet about it if you enjoyed it and uh, we will see you again next week.